This is the 18th video on the uh, Battle of Gettysburg. And game-wise, we're on the July 1st, 1863 turn, 540 p.m. I am playing the Confederates. Artificial intelligence of the game is playing the uh, Union. Um, this is a little bit of a different twist because the Confederates have occupied the same position the Union Army did historically. And they were able to do that because they snuck through south of the Chambersburg Pike. Um, AI did not post any uh, scouts there. So they were able to slip around the Union forces, which were basically congregated south of Oak Hill into uh, the Gettysburg area. And now they've occupied uh, the former historical Union position. And they are currently fighting Union forces uh, along the Emmitsburg Road. Um, and down the um, Baltimore Pike. So Union forces are attempting to force their way north up there. And then the Union force uh, that is uh, just south of uh, Oak Hill is been lured into expecting an attack there, so they're in a defensive mode. Now the game uh, uses uh, fog of war, so you can only see what your units see. And so I have no idea where a lot of these Union divisions are, and I only see them as they get close enough to be spotted. So anyway, that's the backstory here. So uh, let me change a couple settings here. I'm going to take off objectives. I know what all those are. And put on map elevations for hex for each hex. So uh, it shows me what the elevation of each hex is, which is a handy thing to have. Okay, now it is Confederate movement phase, and I do believe, I never can remember, I don't know why, if I've moved these guys or not. Uh, let's check Anderson's division. I haven't moved him. Okay. So he's moving into Gettysburg now. And I have made an error, a slight error, in moving him because I intended to put him to move him down the Tanny Town Road, and I moved him a little too far. Whoop. Okay, so. Now, who? Oh, this is all uh, Wilcox's. Brigade. Boy, he's got a lot of regiments. Okay, so I'm going to move. Let me check if the Tannytown Road is clear. Yes, it is. Why did I move them so far? Okay, so we'll take these guys and we'll move them straight down the Tannytown Road. See how far they get. Yeah. Oh, that far. Okay. I think this will all turn out okay. Because I'll put those guys off to the side. I'll just file them in the back. Oh, these guys actually can move down here. Is 
So they're going to take position along Seminary Ridge. So the interesting thing about this battle so far is there's hardly been any fighting. The Confederates have just been maneuvering for position here. And I've been deliberately staying out of the way of the Union Army. Okay, now we'll bring these guys back. So they're all together. And so we've just been intent on occupying this position, whereas the Union Army, in their befuddled state, without conducting reconnaissance, it's kind of like Pope's Army at Second Manassas. They had no idea where Lee's army was. And I think it was Jackson. He had to step out from the position he took and shoot at Pope's troops passing by so he would know where they are and then Pope finally saw where they were and he set up for an attack. Well this is the same thing here. I'm not sure that the well the, the Union has to know that the Confederates are blocking both Tannytown and um, Baltimore Pike, so I guess they have to assume they're occupying um, the area south of Gettysburg. Well, so I guess they have to know that. But I simulated an, an attack against the Union forces south of Oak Creek with Jenkins Cavalry. And they seem to respond, and so they're they're still dug in there, waiting for the attack. And I just withdrew Jenkins last turn. So you'd think AI would be curious enough that an attack had not occurred to send somebody out to see where the so-called attackers were. Because basically, I, when I withdrew them, they disappeared from their front. But I guess AI isn't that curious, so they're just sitting there waiting for an attack. Now, Anderson here is very close to Gettysburg and, in fact, moving through it. So my objective was to make sure he got safely into the Confederate lines. And Johnson, I thought, Johnson's division, I thought came down the Harrisburg Road. I forgot that, now I remembered that Ewell, because of the his other two divisions were taking, in effect, dirt roads towards Gettysburg. And his trains were going with those two divisions, Corps trains, that he decided to uh, reroute Johnson's division through Chambersburg. And it surprised me when they appeared on the Chambersburg Pike. I thought, oh, no. Uh, I was hoping they'd come from the other direction because then they could have safely got into Gettysburg. Now I'm going to have to... Uh, escort them in and I'm going to have to keep the rear guards. I've got three or four brigades, three I think, designated as rear guards. And I'm going to have to keep those in position. I intended to withdraw them about now, but I can't because Johnson's division is coming down the Chambersburg Pike and He's probably going to take the same path as Anderson's division, which means it's going to take a while for him to get to this point right here. And I've got to make sure he's not attacked while doing so. I don't want to fight a battle away from 
the main Confederate line. I want to get all those guys in. Okay, so Anderson's moved and he's well on his way to get, well, we've got his wagon here. Oh, wait. His wagon was going to go down here, I think. Yeah. The supply wagon. Badly needed if you run out of ammunition, which these units do after a while. Oh! Oh, Johnson's division. Okay, he's pretty close to the cutoff. The cutoff is... Okay, where's the... Um, location designations. Let's turn those on. Locations. Boom. Oh, come on. This is a temporary. God damn. I thought there was a permanent. This is stupid. You should be able to turn them on permanently. Let me look for it. Map labels. Yeah, okay, that's permanently. Okay, so now you can see the historic map labels. So, um, Anderson, or uh, Johnson's division is marching down the Chambersburg Pike here, and he's going to turn off at Hare Tavern. So it'll be about one more move until he gets there. Let's change the scale on this. So here's Hare Tavern. Just about arrived at the turnoff. And if this isn't bad enough, with Johnson's division marching down here, now I've got a Confederate artillery battalion following him. And these guns really form a long line on the Chambersburg Pike because only one section, which probably is about right, can occupy a hex, a road hex. And the reason for that is that there's a lot that goes along with the, the gun. I mean, the gun has a caisson attached to, directly to it, and then it has two other ones, I think, attached to it. Uh, plus, there's a couple wagons attached to the battalion, like a forge wagon and some other stuff. And then there's a bunch of caissons attached to that artillery battalion in reserve. So there's a whole bunch of stuff attached to that battalion. And if you uh, allocate it out per gun, this is probably about right. It's about two guns. They take up a lot of room, and there was a lot of room between each gun as it marched on the uh, highway or the turnpike here. And these are these are 100-yard hexes, which is 300 feet. Seems like a lot, but it's not if you have a lot of wagons. And I'm trying to think. I think each of these artillery pieces and their limbers had six horses each and each horse I think that I'm trying to think how much they allowed per horse well I don't know what what's a, a normal horse like six feet long seven feet long so Three times seven, that's 21 feet. The wagon is probably 12, 15 feet. So 41, plus you've got five yards between wagons. So that's 46 feet of wagon 
plus there's extra limbers and you know all kinds of stuff so yeah I can see it but it really lengthens out like on this freeway then of course when you get in a battle then you can stack those uh, sections up but they're still trailing out behind Johnson's division so it's a long line of stuff you know, marching down the Chambersburg Pike but I want to get these guys inside the Confederate lines before night and then at daylight we get Longstreet's Corps Two divisions, McLaws and Hood, starts marching down the Chambersburg Pike. I think probably about at least by 7 a.m., maybe earlier. But uh, I guess Slocum has arrived at two taverns which is maybe that's the advance units I'm fighting there uh, he arrived there I think about 3 p.m. and about 5 p.m. which is probably what I, why I'm meeting his units here uh, now is he's marched to Gettysburg and then you've got, you've got the third corps one division marching up Tannytown Road, plus you've got the Second Corps and the Artillery Reserve will be marching up there. So the hot spots are right now are going to be in the south. In the north, technically you should have the First and Eleventh Corps, but I only see about two divisions plus Buford deployed south of Oak Hill, and I don't see anything else. So I don't know where all those troops are. It could be anywhere. And this is the really, I was a big war, board gamer. I mean, I've got a ton, a ton of board games. Probably have most every Civil War one and Napoleonic and World War II. But these electronic games can't compare to them in, in at least two huge regards. First of all, you can play Fog of War easily with these uh, electronic games, which you can't do with a board game. Basically, you see everything. And yeah, you can play with dummy markers, but that never works out well. And that's a lot of work. Here, it's built into the design, and it's great. Uh, the artificial intelligence is going to get better and better. Uh, it's got some gaps now, like I said. Uh, they don't scout. So uh, it's like you're playing General Pope during the Civil War with the Army of uh, Virginia. He's wandering around trying to find you. Um, and you can execute, uh, you know, like Stonewall Jackson's attacks because since he apparently doesn't do much scouting, you can line up an attack on his flank just like Stonewall Jackson did at Chancellorsville, which makes it real exciting to play these games. Um, and the second thing is, the maps can be huge. I mean, this map is gigantic. It goes all the way down to Emmitsburg. You could never play that on a war game. Now, the biggest war game map I've ever played on, although there are some actually bigger, is War in Europe. And that takes an 8 foot by 8 foot table. And if you set it all up and you try to move something in the middle of the table, it's impossible. You have to break the table up and slide it away so you can access the middle. You just can't move that. So even an 8 foot by 8 foot map is way too big for a board game. But this, this map, I don't know how many hexes this map contains but it's a lot but I'll give you an idea I know some of the World War II maps contain a quarter million hexes and this I might look this one up I 
fact, let me do that right now since I think I'm thinking about it. Let me save this in case something goes south. Oh shoot. I'm processing uh I'm posting a video. Okay. It's published. Checks are still running. It's checking something. Uh, uh better not uh disturb it otherwise I'll try at the end of this game end of the session to remember to go back there and look up and see if they list the number of hexes it's going to be at least 50,000 which is let me just do a quick calculation here on war in Europe each hex is 15 millimeters or 16. 16 divided by 25 is 0.64 inches. So we've got 8 feet times 12, 96 times 96, 9,000 square inches times 0.64 so war in Europe has 5,800 uh, 5,898 hexes this game probably at least has 50,000 maybe more I don't know it's a big map so see that's the that's the other thing you can get huge maps here now you got to have the memory, obviously, in your computer. I've got a gaming computer, so I'm good. But it's just great. What the hell did I do here? There's Black Horse Tavern, so... Okay, here's uh, Johnson. Here's the artillery battalion in back of them. Um, I've got to get this wagon off the road. I'll move it off the road on this side road because it moves slower especially when you get off of this turnpike it moves slower than anything else which makes sense Because a lot of times it was pulled by mules and I do believe the civilians were hired to drive the wagon so I mean there's not going to be much military discipline with them and they're going to be carrying heavy loads ammunition and rations so you're going to move slower. So when you've got a column, the best thing to do is put them on a sidetrack for a while and then uh, have them fall in behind the column. Otherwise, they're going to hold up the whole column behind them. So we don't want anything held up here because once the Yankees get wind of what's happening here they may decide to attack and I don't want to be fighting way away from Gettysburg because we're not going to be able to give them any re timely reinforcements and I want to fight within the Gettysburg defense line not outside of it Okay, next turn the wagons will be able to swing on the road. Now, let's see if we're getting any more reinforcements. Jeez, we are. Where are they coming from? Oh, God. 
another artillery battalion, Nelson's. I believe that's a core a reserve artillery battalion. Jesus, they're coming down the same road, Chambersburg Pike. Now, if the Confederates were in their historical position, this would be great. But they're not. And there's nothing with this artillery. Which is not that great. Well... God, I hope I don't get anything more down on this pike. This is enough. Be a fingernail biter to see that everything here gets inside the Gettysburg defense perimeter. All right. That's all that stuff. Now, here's the force, and there's a question mark right there. Last time there was a wagon, supply wagon there. I don't know if that's the same thing or if there's other forces there. But here you got three artillery sections. One, let's go closer, two, three, four. There's three dismounted cavalry regiments. There's four regiments. There's another dismounted cavalry. So all of Buford's cavalry is here. I wiped out several regiments in Gamble's brigade. So this is all that's left. So this is like two divisions. And I don't know. from what units but there's two corps there's the 11th corps and there's the first corps so where are all those guys I don't know got one uh, cavalry guy here watching them okay so we've got a guy we've got a regiment guarding each crossing into Gettysburg This is Archer. Archer's Brigade lined up here. Over here is uh, Early's Division. And Rhodes's Division is deployed down here. They're having a fight with the Union here at the uh, Baltimore Pike. And we just we have two brigades here, one here, and another one here that's coming out. The ground here is low, so the Union can hide troops. We'll see what they're hiding here. So we're coming out, and we're going to attack the flank of these guys. These are two Confederate regiments. And we're, as they're attacking, um, Iverson's brigade, of all things, um, these guys from uh, Doles' brigade is, is coming out here to see what's out here and attack these guys to help throw back their attack. In the meanwhile, we've got Ramser's brigade. These are all... These are uh, uh, of Rhodes Division. They're coming down this trail here, and they're going to come out here and swing around here in case something comes, in case these guys meet a bunch of regiments here. These guys are going to hopefully try to swing out on their um, flank. And then I've got these two regiments holding like these little, these fortified positions right here and then there's another there's a cavalry Jenkins 
cavalry here. I mean, they're going to go down the road here and provide some flank protection. And I've got Hoke's brigade here. He's going to go into these woods because I suspect there may be some infiltration in these woods and I want to secure the flank over here. Because we've got the wagon parked here. So, these guys move. Now everybody is in good position here. Let's make sure all the artillery is deployed. We've got two guns here unlimbered, so okay, everybody's unlimbered. Got these guys here. So, we want to move Hulk. Oh, nuts, I moved Hulk already. Okay, so he's moved. And so is Jenkins. Okay, so there's really nothing more to do here. These guys are moved too. Okay, so that's done. So let's check the Tanny Town Road. Now we've got... Union... Oh, coming in on the flank here. Okay. Okay, this this is one of Daniel's uh regiments. We're going to put him into line. Ah, oh, damn, the guy's moved already. There was a regiment here. Did he get killed or did he run away? I don't see him. Maybe he got killed to the last man in the last volley. I don't know. This guy's disrupted, so that isn't good. So this wagon is going back. This guy's disrupted. We need more men down here. Okay, he's going to go in the woods. I don't think I can deploy him in the uh, you, you know, can only change formations at the beginning. So I'll have to wait till next turn before I change into line. These guys can still fire in this hex, I believe, so they'll stay put. These guys will go over here. These guys will turn. No, he can't. He's moved. He doesn't have any more movement. Now this one, this is a difficult choice. What have I got here? A routed guy. Okay, this is where he went. So this guy was over here and he got routed. So how am I going to do this? Okay, we've got a Union regiment attacking here. This guy has to turn. One heck, oh, got zero movement, but I think I can fire at this guy anyway. Things are getting dicey here. Now this guy, this is interesting. I should go down here and put him in the woods here. And I think that's what I'll do. These guys, he should he sh he should also go down here and switch out with this guy who's disordered. 
but he's going to go down here, I think. So he doesn't have enough movement to go in the woods, but I'm going to make sure this guy, if he goes in here, he's not going to come out. And I've got another, oh, one more regiment down here. Hmm, it's going to be dicey. That's all I can do for them for the moment. Where's some more troops? Where? Where? Oh, here. Anderson. Well, he's a ways away. That's the closest I've got. Okay. Over here, this is okay. Gettysburg is okay. Okay, I think I'm done moving. Oh, wait, let me check the outlying positions here. On the Emmitsburg Road. Okay, what do we got going on here? We've got a Union regiment here. Um, I'm in column. Okay, I've got to go in the line. Oh, damn, I've moved everything here, too. Uh, well, next turn, I've got to go in a line. And then there, there was a Union regiment that popped out on this road, out of these woods. And then I think I vaporized them. I sent some... I sent this brigade this way down the road, this way, and then I, these guys blasted them. They formed a line here, and I blasted them to smithereens. But there might be somebody coming through the woods again, for all I know. This is the wheat field. So I have to watch them with these cavalry guys. And I have to turn this artillery towards them with these... Uh, with this regiment here. So I'm kinda, these guys are marching around this way, covered by this cavalry. Okay, so that's everything there. Where's this other group here? There, there's the other group. So we're holding our own here. And Now, good, I can go in the line there. I'll push this artillery section up there. Let's see if I can deploy. Oh, I can deploy them too. Good. These guys are routed. Perrin is back there trying to rally them, and I got one... Uh, regiment holding this road if somebody tries to get in back of me. And this other one here, he's in column. Is this guy facing south? Yeah. So we'll face him at that angle. That's okay in case someone tries to sneak through the woods. I'll put him in line, and then I'll unlimber the artillery. Okay. Now this guy is in line. This guy is almost out of ammo. Here's the wagon that's coming. So I'm going to withdraw him back here to get some ammo. Then I'm going to put this guy into column and see if I can move him across the stream. I can in the woods. And then reface him. 
to give these guys support on their left flank and to be an outlier if anyone tries to come through here. So you can only change formation at the beginning of your move. So next move I'll change the formation. Meanwhile, you can see we've had some battles here and I think I routed and disordered two battalion, two regiments, but this guy is standing here against these guys in this gap. And I think he's just taking a defensive position, which is okay. Because these guys are just guarding. You can see the tail end of Anderson's division marching here to Gettysburg. And they've got to guard Johnson's division coming down the same road, plus those two artillery battalions. So they've got to hold off hold these guys off. I don't care to enter into a battle with them. I'm just defending this position so they don't get past it and start interdicting this road because that would be very serious. So okay, that's everything. So let's go on to the next phase which is the Union defensive fire. Okay, is he going to shoot at me? Yeah, he did, but no effect. Good. Okay, this guy is shooting at him. Fatigued. These guys are down to Tannytown Road. Two casualties. Two, that's nothing. Eight, that's low. These guys are shooting long range. That's ridiculous. They only got three. Now we're at the Baltimore Pike. Sixteen, okay, he's right next to me. He's duking it out. Two. I'm shooting at this guy. Eleven. Oh, look, uh, this guy popped up here. Thirty-seven. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so these guys were hiding on low ground. Now we see them. Offensive fire. Okay, we'll start here. And these guys coming down this position are going to be most opportune because they'll be coming behind these guys. As for now, let's give back some of those musket balls to him. Ten. Well, I didn't do as good as him. So maybe we'll have better luck on these guys. Nine. Ah, how's that? I'm on his flank. Oh, well, see, I'm disordered here already. Fire two guns off in their faces. Let's see how they like that. Five. Jesus, are these guys cross-eyed? They should get better, uh, more odds than that. Five. Jeez. Uh, that's kind of pathetic. Let's see if these guys can do better. Now, see, there, there, that's better. Twelve. Not great, but it's better than five. 12. Okay, that's not bad. Now we'll let go with this gun. Six. Well, nothing to brag about. Nine. Okay, that this guy's disordered. Oh, there's two here. Oh, maybe they're planning to assault over the walls. I guess we'll see. Okay, that didn't go all that well for the Confederates. But it could have been worse. Now, oh, where's the other firefight? Down here in the Tanny Town Road. Let's see how this goes. Now we're going to fire straight ahead here. I'm going to ignore these guys to the side for the moment. I'm disrupted anyway, so let's four men. Well, that's nothing to brag about. We we got three guns now. Let's see what that'll do. Cannot fire. Oh, we just moved him there, I guess. So that makes sense. Okay, let's see. This guy's disordered already. I don't think this guy can fire at him. Yeah, he can. Four men. Jeez. What's the matter with these guys? Anybody teach them how to shoot a gun? Or how to aim it, maybe. Nine. 
None of these guys are getting much in order. Oh, 31. Now, see, I finally got something there. Now, I've got some artillery here. Four guns. Let's take two of them against this guy. Four. Isn't that pathetic? Now, both these guys are disordered. That guy isn't. Okay, so we'll... Let's fire the other guns against this guy. 15. Now that's better. See? That's what you should be doing, you slackers. Now we'll fire the uh, infantry regiment against this guy. 7. Okay. Now this is to give you a perspective, we're behind Little Round Top. That's where this is being fought now. Devil's Den is right here. Here's the triangular field. So the rest of this uh, rear guard is fighting uh, north of the Peach Orchard. So these, these guys are too, well, they're not too far away for artillery, but they are from musketry. It's a waste of time here. We'll shoot some artillery at him. Two guns, six men. Well, that's nothing to brag about, but it's better than nothing. Two? Jeez. I'll shoot once more here. Seven. Hmm. Well, I think that's all. I wouldn't give these guys anything for effectiveness. So far, Confederate melee, I don't have any. Union movement. Okay, let's see what he does. Forney. Oh, geez, we jump from one end to the other. So we're down here near the peach orchard. We've got two regiments here. One's, they're both disrupted. Clank. Where is this? Oh. So we've got two batteries here coming up. Coming up to the Hagerstown Road. Okay, so they're getting reinforcements. Okay, we're down to the Tanny Town Road. Are we seeing any more troops or is it just them? Oh, this one guy withdrew. Apparently, where'd he go? He was right there. Now he's gone. He just got two of them up there. Okay. Now we're in the Baltimore Pike. Okay, I don't see any new units. But I'll have some new ones coming on this flank. Oh, Confederate defensive fire. Okay. Uh, let's shoot at these guys point blank. 16. Now that is a little better. Shoot at these guys point blank. Go toe to toe. 14. That's okay. Okay, we've got the artillery here. Yeah, fire, firing canister right in their face. And they get six men. Jeez. Oh, but they're both disordered in front of me. Okay, so six men, I guess it adds up. Now, the guys in front of here skedaddled. Maybe they went in those woods. See, maybe they are going to flank me. So let's see if these guys can fire to the side. Yeah, they can. Let's see how you like these. Ten. Okay, that's better. Better than it was before. Let's see if the musketry. Yep. Eighteen. Now, see, that's better. That is definitely better. Okay, that wasn't bad this time. I'd like to know where those guys went. 
Now we'll go over here to to the peach orchard. So this guy's coming here. We got nothing to fire at him. Did I fire these guys already? No. He's the only guy standing up here to do something. So let's make him pay. Eight. Well, it's not that great. But it does add up. Fifteen. Now that's much better. Now let's get in the twenties here. I'll be happy. Three. That's pathetic. Let's try a shot from here. I can't see him. Yeah, this is this is blocking terrain right here. Same height I'm at. <sighs> okay. Uh, we've got this other position down the Hagerstown Pike. Now uh, we've got two artillery batteries coming up, but nothing else uh, that I can see anyway. Okay, so let's let these guys have it. Some artillery fire. Ooh, 13. Now that was better. Much better. Oh, he another regiment popped up here. Maybe that came up from the south. 12. Wow, he disappeared. Poof. You can just see his leader is sitting here all alone. So what the hell, what the hell happened to those guys? Oh, they're all, that's right. They're all dead. Okay, well, he brought one regiment up and one went poof, so he's got no more. Oh, that was wonderful. I wish I knew who those guys were. See, you can't identify these guys. You don't know who you're even firing at most of the time. Yeah, but that's one less guy, so that's a happy circumstance. Okay, so that's it for me. Union Offensive Fire. Okay, now we'll see what he does. We're at uh, Tanny Town Road now. We got five men. Uh, we're at the Peach Orchard. We got two men. That's not very much. Okay, we're at Baltimore Pike. Look at how we switch around. Three men. That's not very much. Ten. Okay, did better there. Thirteen. I am right next to him, so... I gotta get those guys on the flank. One man, that wasn't very good. Union melee, okay, is he gonna go over the wall? No. Okay, Confederate movement. Okay, that's good. Let me just check the time. 53? Uh, well, I don't think I'm going to, uh, I think I'll call the, let me save this, I think I'll call the game for this turn, because I only have like five minutes to move and it's not enough. Let me just do some thinking here. Okay, I've got a guy scouting down here, so he doesn't see anything. Nope, so nobody's coming from there. So these guys are going to come around here. You put the fear of God in these guys. And I can set up some artillery here if I want to. Where we got high ground. We've got high ground right where these two guys are. So if these guys don't go away, I'll set up the artillery. No, oh, Jesus, I'd have to set it up right here, here, because if I set it up here, that's low ground, and I set it up here, these two hexes will shield these guys. Okay, I'll have to bring the artillery up, like right behind these two guys. But I've got three more regiments, which I'll send up there, so I'll flank them there. I suspect he's moving something through these woods. So I'm going to send probably two of these regiments over here into the woods, maybe on this side of the creek. 
just in case anybody's sneaking through here. And I've got this cavalry. What the hell am I going to do with them? I'm going to send them down this road. Oh, these stupid messages. And out into this area, I think. There's no way I can cross the stream without getting disordered, so I don't want to even think of that. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's the end, and uh, we'll continue tomorrow with Confederate movement.